Given this game, I would not be entirely surprised if turning back actually got him killed. Wait, we're here again? And you thank the Lord for sparing our baby's life. Just like in Kingsbridge. What am I highlighting there? Oh, the construction site. Although the design looks very different. Almost from another world. I was like, I was like, why is this guy like from like Kingsbridge? A good place to say my prayers. Then let's do that. Mother Mary. I thank you, dear Lord. All right, steady now. I thank now. you for having spared my child. I thank you for- Don't let go until it's done. But why are you showing mercy on me? I failed everyone I cared about. I failed Jack. I failed my brother. And if I never return, I would also break the oath I had given father. It's just... It's just that I feel like I've never had a life of my own. I've always fought for others. And this may be the very first time that I fight for something that I only want for myself. Maybe I should just go back and help rebuild Kingsbridge. Maybe Jack doesn't even care for me anymore. Amen. Huh. I am super nervous about this construction site business where I'm sitting there and every line kept ending with a dash, which is usually an interruption. So I thought that it was going to be interrupted by the stuff they were hauling up falling behind me. Has anything changed around here? See, what was the highlight spots as spacebar? As a corbel. So that's the only thing. We can't go inside. I was I was curious about that. Is this... Wait, did Jack make that? I've seen one of those before. It's amazing, isn't it? The man who did that really had it in him. I agree. He always did. Oh, you knew Master Jacques? Yes, but it's been a while since I last saw him. It's a shame that the Master let him go. In just one month, he did so many things. The Master Builder said he'd fired him after just three days. <sighs> did he? Well, maybe that's how he remembers it. The two didn't really see eye to eye, you know? To tell you the truth, Everyone thinks that he feared for his own job having someone like that around. The last thing Jack did was carve that corbel. It was the one thing the master let him do. Then when he was done, he was asked to leave. It bears so much pain. I know. Jack worked very hard on it. He was impatient and had a temper, but you could see that he tried to overcome it. Conquering that rock was very important to him. Oh, I understand that so well. Do you happen to know where he went next? He wanted to walk the pilgrim trail to Santiago de Compostela. The Camino? The way of St. James? He said he might find someone there who knew his father. Just one more thing. How was he when he left? Hmm. Never thought about that. Relieved, I guess. He seemed ready for something new. Thank you so much for your help. Think nothing of it. And good luck on your travels. May you find what you are looking for. Son of a bitch, he lied to me. Isn't it odd? Just when you stop looking, you come across the most curious of things. Like these three devices that one of my merchants brought back from Baghdad. <laughs> oh no, is it another one of your Banu Musa toys, Rashid? They're not toys, Avriel. They're objects of scholarly ingenuity and reflection. I will let my valued friend from the North do the honors. Far away was no joke. 
Is this actually happening far away, or is this his dream? Let me draw your attention to the magnificent songbird on the table. And then, to that wondrous donkey next to the entrance. Although, the most astounding thing of all stands right between them. One of Rashid's new That's toys. Haha, <laughs> precisely. But, one thing at a time, let us let Jack decide what to demonstrate first. It's from a country far east of here. It runs with water alone. Plain wood with stone eyes, with no mechanism or machinery. No one knows how she works. Another new device. This one works with steam. Pure ingenuity. He likes to take his time, doesn't he? Is this a dream? Where I'm so esteemed all of a sudden, or what? I'm curious about that. Also, that dude... It's a woman with a newborn baby wandering the countryside, and he and sends you on a goddamn wild goose chase. Because they won't let you bother- they won't let you question anybody around the place, because he's so insecure about his job. And there's totally people around that knew where he went next, because everyone else knew him better. Assuming that... For all we know, they knew them better too, I don't know. He might have just been pretending to not know, which is even more dickish. What is he doing now? Why did I cool off in the not afternoon? Sure too heavy to carry around. Very primitive compared to the rest in here. Alright, I've still got my sling. And click, and destroy. <laughs> Um, on second thought, why don't you save the lady for last? Otherwise, the other two devices might appear bland and boring in comparison. I agree. It's empty. I'm guessing I can use this to get some water. So I can take that water and can I cook it up with the candle? Please be careful with that candle, my friend. I grabbed the candle. Rashid must never know I burned down a cathedral. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. You're just unloading the guilt here, aren't you? Did I put it in the donkey? No! Keep that candle away. Why? What would happen if you set it on fire? Yes, Rashid, we're curious. You are not. You're just fooling around. And so are you, Jack. <laughs> Sorry. Alright, well that thing works on steam, so let's put the candle in here. And now? Now we need to add some water. We're in the same place, yep. And that's how you contain the steam. It's so beautiful it will make you cry. Just listen. Ivanu Musa. The Banu Musa brothers were... I was reading this at first and realized the next line was the same. The Banu Musa brothers were three scholars of Persian descent who lived in Baghdad in the 9th century. They are known for the Book of Ingenious Devices, a large illustrated collection of mechanical appliances and automata. Those automata were largely designed for entertainment, but featured innovative engineering. Their brothers also wrote books on astronomy, astrology, and geometry, last of which had a great influence on both Islamic and European mathematics. But how marvelous! How does it work? Maybe it's a miracle. <laughs> right. Go on, Jack. Tell them. There's a hidden wheel inside the box. It turns an axle that in return raises and drops a sequence of small cylinders inside. These cylinders work like fingers playing a flute. But who is blowing into the flute? Steam. 
steam? Yes. When I opened the pipe, it gradually pushed itself into the tube. The power of steam. For once, I must agree. This is brilliant. Of course! It was created by a Muslim, after all. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. What else have you got, Rashid? Anyone care for some tea? Thank you, my daughter. We will have some as soon as Jack has finished our presentation. Mind if I watch? Of course not. So, who is this man, Rashid? Jack is a friend of the house. A brilliant man, a scholar and a talented artist. I could watch this man scoop up water all day. Just the other day, he explained Euclid to me. What is that? A Greek who wrote a book called The Elements of Geometry. The Egyptians translated it into Arabic, and now the Englishmen are turning it into Latin. How very peculiar. God damn, how far did Jack go in only a few years? He used to be the one that like I hunt deer in woods. Kindly explain how it works, Jack. You see that bowl floating on top of the water? At the bottom of that bowl is a small hole. Through it, the bowl is slowly filled with liquid. Once it's full, it sinks, pulling a string which makes the ball drop onto a weight. This, in return, pulls the bowl up again, emptying it in the process. Thus, resetting the entire mechanism. If you timed it perfectly, you could make it drop a ball at every hour. Turning it into a clock. How clever. For me, it's still nothing more than a puking donkey. Ha <laughs> ha, show us more, Rashid. One could join those two and build a singing donkey clock. One song after every hour. That would be pretty clever. I know, right? You could be the one to build it. Oh, that would be unfair. It's your invention. I would let you have it. Or we design it together. <clears throat> you still haven't shown us that statuette yet. Of course. Jack, if you may. Yeah, I want to know what this is now. You've hyped it up so much. I need to put it somewhere cold. Ah, it's mine now. Goodbye. And I just leave with it. A Jew, a Muslim, and, is, and a converted Christian. Yet their quarrels are always playful. Full of wisdom and curiosity. She brought tea. But of course, that's just a pretense. She's too clever. This is an excuse to listen. Shady spot to avoid the midday sun and surround oneself with wonders. Where else would it be cold necessarily? And now? Just be patient, but don't look away. It takes some time for her to. to do what? Mm -hmm. 
Is it crying? Isn't that amazing? No, it's irritating. Rashid, what is going on? We have no idea how it works. Rashid, please. We all know that there is no such thing as a man-made miracle. And this piece of wood is very clearly made by man. I very much agree, my friends. But so far, none of us has an explanation. All we know for certain is that her glassy eyes shed tears when you move her from warmth into cold. Like a plant at sunrise? Like dew. The only difference is the surface, that's all. I think you may be onto something. Am I? Of course, I had no intention of disturbing your conversation. But if you can find out why there's dew gathering on a plant, you may understand why that woman is so weepy. So, who wants a cup of tea? I'll have some. Your daughter is quite something, Rashid. A scholar in her own right. I know, I'd rather she wasn't. It would make marrying her off so much easier. Oh, I'm certain that won't stay a problem for long. Maybe the dew originates from invisible water in the air. Water that stays hidden when it's hot. We've got bad news, Aliena. The pilgrim trails across France converged at Osterbat in the foothills of the Pyrenees. There, the group of 20 or so pilgrims who had been traveling alongside me since I'd left Tours swelled to about 70. Some were prosperous citizens, some probably on the run from justice, a few drunks and several monks and clergymen. Several languages were spoken, including Flemish, a German tongue, and a southern French language called Oc. Nevertheless, there was no lack of communication among them, and as we crossed the Pyrenees, they sang, played games, told stories, and in several cases, had love affairs. While my baby and I kept mostly to ourselves. Schön frech, die mit ihrem Kind. Hush now. Hm? Richtig dreist. Richtig ist korrekt. Kann Mann nicht einfach mal seine Ruhe haben? Der Weg aus Wittenberg war doch anstrengend genug. Okay, you're going too fast for me now. Dreist. I mean, the number three is dry, but I don't know if dreist is the same thing quite. Hat ja auch gar nichts verloren. Stimmt doch, oder? Stimmt doch. Jetzt ist aber gut. Na... Quiet now is also good. I, I recognize kin and man. Uh, kin, kin is child and man. Uh, if, there, if I could read it without fading out that fast, I could, might be able to get more of that. But I'm like, ah, it's, I, I, I need more recall time. Okay. Uh, they can't even hear me, can they? I mean, I'm sorry. He has to cry himself out before he'll fall asleep. It will give you a strong voice one day, won't it? 
Do you have children? Mm. I still can't tell if they speak English or not. Also, I said hear earlier, as if other people who speak different languages don't have ears. That's not what I meant. I meant understand. Let's just keep talking to them. This won't annoy them at all. How long have you been traveling to get here? I met pilgrims from as far east as Franconia. I am sorry. We'll go for a walk so you can get some rest. I've reached peak annoyance of the chil of the uh, German pilgrims. I don't understand them. Is that a German tongue? Yeah, it's it's, it's literally German. Richtig. Hello. The town was granted bridge privileges. So all pilgrims must pass through here. The town's merchants profit greatly. Curious about that. Oh, there's people all around. Most pilgrims stay near the spring in town. I thought the river would be quieter. Now I am the one making all the noise. That poor soul. Maybe I can help her somehow. Is she looking for something? Dear Lord, what are you doing? You should get out of the water. It's freezing. My ring! I lost my ring! Dear Lord, please show mercy. <laughs> Maybe I can help her somehow. Maybe. It's kind of rough, though. I wonder what Jack looks like nowadays. His face is becoming obscured. Hmm. You could might be able to help, but I don't want to reach in. Oh, is it actually getting darker? Time's actually passing right now. Let's go up to the. Oh, we can't go to the bridge. That's. I don't. I'd have to like hand her the baby and just trust a random stranger. Where are you? Where did you go? The cold will kill you. I can't leave without my ring. She's not listening. She's not listening. <gasps> oh wait, there's the ring. <laughs> found it. Let's get that ring to her before she dies. I found it. Yes! Oh, thank you! Thank you so much! You are a very kind woman. So very, very kind. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Now please come out of the water before you die. Are you getting warmer? I am, thank you. I can see this ring is very precious to you. It, it was a gift from my stepmother. She thought I would stay forever, but I didn't. Why did you leave? Oh, I... I... I thought I didn't belong. She always said I was her daughter, but I was sure she was lying. I was so selfish and so stupid. Too stupid to see I really was happy. Tell me about your stepmother. She was such a kind woman. So very, very kind. Maybe you really weren't happy. I don't know. I was very young and thought I was unhappy because I didn't live close to the sea. 
But in the end, the sea did not feel the same about me. The cold there made me sick. It took away my sight. Why didn't you go back? She had been so angry when I left. So angry and disappointed. She would have never let me return. Ah, that's why you went on the pilgrimage. Yes. So that St. James might see my devotion and I will be united with my mother in heaven. I'm just not as kind as you. Not kind at all. Actually, we two have quite a few things in common. I too am trying to make amends with the one man I loved the most. I was told he went straight to Santiago. You will know soon. Not soon enough. It's still four weeks till I get there. He'll be there, I'm sure of it. I hope so. I just feel... I just feel that with every day that passes, I'm losing him a bit more. And that the only thing I can allow myself still to hope for is not love, but forgiveness. I understand. Hey, hush now. Not long now and our journey will be over, hmm? We're diverging so far that it's easy to wonder whether we're even going to see the other characters from the that we've grown familiar with at all. Like horrible villain boy who's the worst person ever made, or you know, the, the monk we've been playing as for the majority of the game practically. Camino de Santiago. El Camino de Santiago, also known as the Way of St. James, is a Christian pilgrimage route to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela, where the remains of Jesus' apostle St. James the Greater were presumably put to rest. The pilgrimage of Santiago, besides Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Rome, is one of the most important pilgrimages in Christianity, and is believed to be one of the only ways to free a pilgrim of their sins. By the 12th century, it has become a well-organized undertaking, undertaking. Even a book was written as a travel guide for pilgrims, a Codex Calixtinus, supporting the pilgrims in completing their travel. A scallop shell is used to guide the pilgrims on their way and serves as a pilgrim of St. James and the Camino, because at the end of their travel, the pilgrims will almost have reached the ocean. There's like a strange appeal to the idea of just going on an incredibly long walk that is somehow curated or signposted. Like it's not just a weird meandering thing. Uh, I live in California and I'm just so used to there being, being a bunch of random towns sp like sprawled out across this vast empty state. But so much of California is just fields and hills and farmland and stuff that it like it feels like there's no reasonable connective tissue of any kind between each city besides the freeway or trains and so like the idea of walking anywhere just sounds absurd and not impossible but definitely like you would just be making your own path essentially We made it all the way here to Pamplona. We're a large, large way from where we started. So we're going to walk the Camino. The woman's name was Alba. She came from a small town somewhere in Catalonia. I quickly got used to her constantly feeling out for her stepmother's ring and the sad guilt that would always follow in her milky eyes. I wasn't sure if she appreciated my company, but I couldn't leave her on her own either. By the time we reached Los Arcos, she'd stopped talking, while I kept on dropping a kind word here and there to let her know I was still by her side.
Alba believed herself to be of weak mind and body, and yet she walked the Camino with a strong sense of purpose that willed her onward. It made me wonder about what I'd told her about my own journey. Did I hope for love, or was I really traveling because I needed him to forgive me? But what was there to forgive? My decision to marry Alfred had been in the best interest of the people of Shiring. It was a sacrifice I had to make to stop the evil reign of William Hamley. These questions had haunted me for a long time now, but if I really was going to see Jack soon, it was time to make up my mind. the path began to gradually turn uphill. It was only two more weeks till we'd reached Santiago. The baby was in a good mood, and so, surprisingly, was Alba. After Astorga, the trail got more difficult. Alba became slower and slower, and we had to rest more. She became quiet again. The strain on her old body grew, and she worried that she might not be able to reach the end. Still, we managed to push onward. The next morning, she refused to get up. Her breathing was disturbingly shallow, and she hardly noticed me touching her forehead. Everything hurts, she said, and urged me to continue without her. Oh, that's rough. Do we abandon her or not? It might be possible for her to simply rest for a time. And we've had we've had such margin of error for our journey already. A little do we know that from our split perspective, Jack may be falling in love already with somebody else after all this. But we could probably do with the rest too after all this. Of course I stayed with her. I brought her food and water and sat by her side, but day after day her condition grew worse. She kept on urging me to go, to find Jack, saying the monks of Ponferrada would take care of her. I'd hardly known her, and most of the time she'd tried to push me away, as if she considered herself a nuisance that slowed me down and who didn't deserve company. It wasn't until a few moments before she died that, for the first time, she smiled at me, and I like to believe that she saw me smile back. I still like to believe that here, in this unlikely place, dying next to a near stranger, she'd found a moment of serenity and happiness but she'd not reached Santiago. When I left, that thought still haunted me. To see that a journey could come to an end so suddenly. But what would be different if she had reached Santiago? Could she have been disappointed by what she found? That's brutal. Hey, welcome new character, dead. Hope you weren't too attached to brand new character. Sorry, there's nothing you can do. She, and by her standards, she died with her sins unforgiven for not finishing the pilgrimage. 